Welcome back to the Victorian Thimble. My name is Cassie and today you're watching a video on the making of Luna Lap and the Bunny. As you can see, the bunny rabbit was cut out at the start of this video and now we're beginning to assemble the rabbit. For this part here, I'm using the pre-cut ears and the pre-cut fusible facing to attach them together. I'm ironing it down, of course, with the bumpy side down and the smooth side up. Press each of these ears for about five seconds and then we're going to be ready for the next part of our sewing project. Now I'm sewing the ears together. At this point, it's just attaching the layers together. I sew quarter inch seam allowance up one ear and down the other side, leaving the bottom open so that you can turn this right side out. Once both ears are sewn, you're gonna turn them right side out I use the tweezers from my serger machine to push out those tips uh, and I find it works quite well. Now here you can see I have a pin mark where I want to stop my sewing and I'm running a stitch line down the center of each ear. This gives the ear some definition and shape and I think it looks very nice. Next we're going to attach the ears to the bunny's head. Here you can see the cutout rabbit head. I take the ear and I fold it in half and what you're going to want to do is line this up in that cut notch at the top of the head with the inner fabric part or the inner ear facing forward to the bunny's head. Now fold this next side over and line it up so that it is flush. Stitch this and now you can turn it out and here's one half of the bunny head with the ear attached. It already looks so good if you ask me. Now here's just some footage of me stitching the two parts of the bunny head together. So both of those stitched ears are tucked inside this bunny head and I'm just sewing quarter inch seam allowance all around the edges and turn it right side out. At the top of the ears, I decided to just whip stitch a couple of extra reinforcement stitches into place to make sure that those ears held firm and wouldn't pull on the seam of the bunny head. Next, it's time to start stuffing this part of the bunny. I added some stuffing into the bunny's head, just some common white polyfill type stuffing. And um, I packed it so that it was reasonably firm, but still had some give to the feel. There's the bunny head stuffed. We're ready for the next steps. I take my sewing machine and I set it on the zigzag stitch and I made it the smallest reasonable stitch I possibly could do on this machine, the narrowest that is, both small and narrow actually, to make sure that I get a good tight seam on this project. You can see from this footage here that as I'm running down the zigzag stitch down the leg of the down the seam of the leg here. Um, it doesn't move real fast. This is actually sped up footage you're watching, but I'm trying to let you get a, a visual for how this project would go. And so first I run the zigzag stitch all the way down. There you can see what the stitch would look like. The next thing that I did on all these seams is I ran a straight stitch right over the closest to the center part of that um, zigzag stitch that I did so that it would be more reinforced. And there we have one strong seam ready to go. Now it's time to attach the foot to the bottom. I pin the right sides of the foot together with a lot of pins and then I sit it into place to stitch on the machine. This is sped up footage again, so I will warn you as you're watching this, it is sped up like 200 times or times two normal. So it actually goes pretty slow so sewing this part. If you opt to do this project, make sure you take your time with steps like this. I added a zigzag stitch all around it before turning it right side out to reinforce it again. Now you see here's the foot stitched with the, the side and back seams done, we're ready to stitch it and close the front of the leg. There's just a quick preview with the legs attached to the body and the head attached. Sorry guys, I didn't get footage of every part of the project. I most certainly tried my best to get most of the video footage for you. 
Now on this part here, I opted to just give you a little bit more footage showing when I'm actually sewing the arms together. So this is just a different sewing machine view of me running that zigzag stitch down just one eighth of an inch seam allowance down the seams on the arms. After I've run that all the way through the machine, I run this straight stitch behind it again as well. You will see in some footage coming up that I actually stitch a little um, finger area that will separate thumb and fingers to try and give the look of a hand to the project a little more. It'll make a little more sense what I'm trying to say when you see it in upcoming footage in a minute. Now it's time to stuff the bunny arms. There's those little hands I was talking about in the previous video footage um, stitched into place so that it has the look of a hand and just using more of the everyday stuffing, I am stuffing the bunny's arms. Now the little arms are ready to be stitched closed. Now that the arms are made and the bunny is most of the way assembled, it's time to attach the arms. This actually takes a little bit of effort because we're attaching two arms through a body, buttons on either side, and so we're gonna need some basic but added tools to do this part of the project. Here you can see me lining up the arms in a position that I think would look good on the rabbit. I'm just testing this out before I begin any stitching. Once I am satisfied with the position of the arms, I take one of the black buttons that makes part of the shoulder look on the outside of the bunny and I line that up into place and I'm testing out the other side here too. Now you need a needle that looks something like this. This is a basic upholstery needle, a generic one that comes in a generic sewing pack. I held these two needles up here so you can see the difference in size from a regular needle to the length and thickness of the upholstery needle. This needle will allow me to sew through all the layers of the bunny's shoulders at once to assemble the bunny. You're going to need your thimble as well. I have this thread that I used as upholstery thread. Sorry guys, that was the closest I seemed to be able to get that footage and I'm just not doing it over. Sorry guys. Now I take my upholstery needle with my upholstery thread on it and I push it through the bunny. I do have a knot on the end of the thread. I pull that through so that I've gone through all of the arms at once. Now I add the first button, line it up where I want it to be on the shoulder, and beginning sew through, begin sewing through to the other side. Look at all that thimble work going on there, everyone. Here's some close-up footage of me pushing that needle through all the way to the other side. This is why you need that extended long needle that the upholstery needle offers you. It helps you get the job done and not lose your mind. Make sure you take your time at this part so that you don't tangle up your thread, by the way. And now this is just some more footage to give you a little more close-up views of me attaching the arms onto the shoulders of the bunny. It is a little bit tricky work, but you can do it. Now it's time to stitch some eyes into place. You can see that I pre-marked the fabric where the position of the eyes should be. I have these little black buttons that I'm using for Luna's eyes. Now I take my sewing needle and I'm gonna start sewing through the marked out places on the head. Put a knot in the end of your thread, everyone. Take the button that you're going to use and you're going to push the needle through the eye of the button and then through the bunny's eye where it's marked out. Push it all the way through and make sure it's coming out the other side where the marking is so that you know your buttons are going to be positioned exactly where you want on the bunny's head. After you have this pushed through, you can work that first button in and pull it through and pull the thread through all the way to the other side. Adding the second button on the other side, pull that thread through, 
make sure you're happy with the position of the bunny's eyes before you start stitching back and forth. You can see here I'm working hard to make sure I'm happy with the position of the eyes on the bunny's head so that he doesn't look uneven. And there's some close-up footage of the eyes being stitched in. Here you can see these Love So brand heat erasable markers is what I use to mark the bunny out and I'm going to use it again right now to mark the bunny's nose that we're about to stitch on by hand. Now I take the fabric marker and I just mark out the position where I'd like the nose to be on the bunny before sewing it. I'll use this as a guideline to keep the shape on track while I sew. Now using that thimble again everybody, it's time to sew the nose. I did use a satin finished thread to make this nose. It wasn't quite embroidery thread so I wished I had something maybe a little thicker in the house but overall the nose still turned out great. And there she is, all done. Luna Lappin the bunny. She sure looks smart. I think she's ready to go to a party. Here's a side view. I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. Oh, but she's missing one important part. Let's see what that is. You got it. Every bunny needs a tail. What I did for the tail is I just took some uh, fun fur off of a Santa Claus hat that I bought at the dollar store at Christmas time. I cut away a piece that I needed and I made it into a circle. I stitched all around the edges of this to pull it together to make a little ball. Now that that ball's ready, I'm stuffing that little ball to make the little cotton tail for the bunny. Here's the bunny tail all ready to go. I put the unfinished side face down and hand stitch it to the bunny. Now it's time to make her dress. I used some stuff called Stitch Witchery in the hem here to reduce bulkiness but still hold everything together. With the rest of the dress already assembled, I decided to add some beautiful decorative stitching to the bottom of the dress. Look here, you can see the lovely detail that my machine was able to give. And after that, I decided I wanted to add a little more detail, so I hand stitched on this cotton lace to the dress to give it an even more authentic feel. Here's the sundress all finished. It's time to get her dressed. I'm so happy with the way the detail at the bottom of the dress turned out. It was a lot of fun to make. And here she is, all dressed in her little sundress. Let's take a look. So there you have it. This is Lulu Lappin the bunny all made. You can see she's got her cute little cotton tail. She's got the accents on her ears and her feet. She's got her little hand stitch face and look at the detail on that dress. All the little stitching and the lace border. And there she is, all done. So there we have it, that's the project done. Here is Lulu Lappin the bunny, all made up. You can see that she's got nice little accents on her feet and in her ears. And you can see her little cotton tail. And look at all the nice detail there on the dress, all the little stitching and the lace. And there you have it, Lulu Lappin the bunny, all done.